born Benjamin Zeev Herzl. Theodor Herzl was a Hungarian Jew from Budapest who most notably conceived the notion of political Zionism. It was Theodore who strongly proposed the idea of needing a government in order to create a state for the Jewish people. Without a government, Herzl strongly believed that there would be no hope for the Jews securing a nation. It all started on May 2nd, 1860, when Theodore Herzl was brought into the world to Jeanette and Jacob Herzl, two non-practicing, assimilated Jews. Jacob was in business, so the Herzl family was financially set. Before having Theodore, Jacob and Jeanette had a daughter a year earlier, Pauline, who died of typhus when Theodore was 17. As a young adult, Theodore Herzl developed an interest for poetry and the humanities. His passion later evolved into a successful career in journalism. He used his literary skills to spread his views on political Zionism. It was the Dreyfus Affair that caused Theodore Herzl to realize that something needed to be done for the Jewish people. He felt that we deserved a place to call home, a place to feel safe, and a place to be ourselves. As a result, he started the World Zionist Organization, which aimed to bring Jewish people to a Jewish homeland. As a young and ambitious journalist, Herzl visited France to cover the events of the Dreyfus Affair, a modern manifestation of anti-Semitism in Europe. Dreyfus, both an assimilated Jew and highly decorated officer in the French army, was accused of leaking military secrets to the German embassy. The young journalist was appalled at the sight and the sound of mobs of Frenchmen screaming, Death to the Jews! Death to the Jews! It was at this moment that Theodore Herzl realized that despite how much a Jew assimilates, anti-Semitism will always be prevalent, and thus the idea of a Jewish state was born. Herzl believed that anti-Semitism was not rooted in hate, but that Gentiles had a legitimate reason to dislike the Jews. In Herzl's A Solution of the Jewish Question, Herzl claims that the Jews were seen as competition to Gentiles. Jews came out of the ghetto and went into the middle class. Jews were hardworking and good at their jobs. Gentiles did not want to compete with the Jews because the Jews were better at their jobs. Herzl believed that Jews were disliked because we were seen as a threat and as competition. Herzl explains that Gentiles used anti-Semitism as self-defense. Herzl presents the idea that if Jews leave their countries and go to a place for Jews to be Jewy together, Gentiles can, can just take Jews' place in the middle class. Herzl explains that the only way for a Jewish state to be successful is that if other countries are in support of it. Herzl's explanation of an anti-Semitism would support the idea of Gentiles simply taking Jews' place in the middle class. In fact, it would be beneficial for Jews to have their own country, because then Jews would no longer be competition to Gentiles. Herzl was right in this belief. To this day, we still need support from other countries to maintain Israel's right to exist. The UN approved the existence of a Jewish state. Although Herzl never saw the true land of Israel, his beliefs were certainly prophetic, even to this day. Shalom, and welcome to Zionism 101. Tonight, we have a very special guest, Theodore Herzl, here with us um, for an exclusive interview. Come on in, Herzl! Thank you. How are you? I'm good. How are you? It's just such a great honor to interview one of the founding fathers of Zionism. Speaking of Zionism, could you just give us a brief summary of what it is in your opinion? To me, Zionism demands a publicly recognized and legally secured homeland in Palestine for the Jewish people. This platform is unchangeable. Wow. Well, Herzl, in case you didn't know, we have achieved a Jewish homeland. In 1948, the UN voted in favor of a Jewish state. Where is the Jewish homeland located? Because Palestine is our unforgettable historic home. The very name would be a force of marvelous potency for so many. 
our people together. Well, actually, Palestine no longer exists. <gasps> Instead, we call it Eretz Yisrael. Artsenu. Everything worked out after the first Aliyah. Oh, yes. I only say that because I'm a strong believer in how philanthropic colonization is a failure. National colonization will succeed. And succeed it did. Now Israel is a modern democratic state with over 8 million people living there. Wow. Yes, it's true. In 2015, the Jewish community is flourishing despite encountering many hardships on our journey. Baruch Hashem. Yes, it's wonderful. Oh no. What is it? We're almost out of time. Quick, before you go, do you have any advice to give all of the young, aspiring Zionists out there? If you will it, it is no dream. And that's it for tonight's edition of Zionism 101. Thanks for tuning in, folks. <laughs> if you will it, it is no dream. And I dream with my eyes. Open most of the time. What I see